All right, so I have my um, frame section all finished up for my front seat. And I went through and put some, uh, it was a truck bed coating. It was the spray kind. Um, I sprayed that on all of it, all the way around. So that come out pretty good. <clears throat> so today I'm getting ready to pull this rear body section off. And I'm going to start on my engine mount. Now, I think what I'm going to do um, is I want to try and make my engine mount to where it is solid with my rear axle. So I basically want the back half, the back section of my mount to move up and down when my axle moves up and down so that I don't have problems with my chain popping off. When I get all that on there, I have a transmission on the way. Ford reverse transmission should be here tomorrow, along with a 40 series clutch, uh, clutch kit, uh, front and back, or the, the driven clutch, and then the, uh, the uh, clutch that hooks to the motor. So I'll have both of them tomorrow too, hopefully. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, get that out of my way. We can come back and add something on later. Um, <clears throat> friend of my dad's does aluminum welding, so if I have to, I can come back uh, afterward to have him weld some kind of cross brace in for me if need be. Uh, but I got this engine plate right here. This is just a piece of steel I went and picked up. It's 12 by 24, along with some inch and a half steel tubing, and then I got this piece, which is two inch inside diameter. And that rear axle is two inches. So the plan is to cut two pieces off of this, or well, probably one piece, and then cut it in half, cut it down the middle on each side. And that'll give me two little, two little C cups that I can, that I'll be able to weld them to the top of the axle and then come off of them with two bars and then we'll weld that plate to it be two bars coming up and then a bar going across and then we'll weld that plate to that and then up here on the front i'll do something just like on a regular um, gas powered club car where it has something right here in the middle uh, just for that to set on and we'll do some kind of rubber bushing up here where it can it can rock freely up and down like a normal club car would uh, but that's the plan. I'm going to get going on this thing and I'll show you what I come up with. All right, so I got this brace cut out of my way. And I got my swing arm welded up. This is my new swing arm down here on the ground. So I got a couple little half moon pieces of pipe that's going to go over my rear axle that are welded on there. This is going to go something like that over the rear axle. And then I'll have to position this up and figure out what height I want this. And then that plate, the back of that plate is going to be welded onto here, which will come forward and then have this some kind of floating uh rubber bracket type deal on the front like I said like how the original club cars have uh, but I have to wait on my um, transmission to get here so that I can because I want to put my transmission and my engine on that same plate so they're both going to be mounted on this plate I'm probably going to end up having to cut some of this plate down uh, there's going to be transmission and then the engine and uh, I need to make sure that I get my belt length just right on both of those to where because neither one of those are going to be adjustable um, so I have to make sure that I get the belt length just right on that before I start drilling holes and mounting anything permanently and so that's going to be the next step I may go ahead and put a cross brace from here to here though 
uh, and that'll give me something to mount that center bracket to. So I may go ahead and do that right now. All right, so this is my mount that I just welded up. This is made out of quarter inch steel plate. Um, I put a little bit of black RTV on the top of that. And then I have this rubber uh, that my neighbor gave me a while back. Um, it's like some industrial grade rubber. It has like a fiber stitching through the center of it. Uh, but it's really durable. And what I'm going to do is uh put this on over the rtv or the top of that and then uh, i'll go through and rivet it also and i'm going to put some rivets through the top of this uh probably down both sides and that should be pretty uh pretty durable for that engine plate to sit on as far as moving up and down all right there she is she's done finally i got a couple days in it trying to get everything mocked up and get everything just right um so that's the custom swing arm that i built from scratch this is going to be welded on the rear axle on both sides uh, and then the front half down here uh, the front half will be free floating just like our original uh, gas powered club car would be so this right here will be sitting on this mount that I made this is quarter inch steel plate with a big thick chunk of rubber on top of that that I put some gasket maker some RTV underneath and then riveted that to the steel plate uh, so that ought to be pretty durable right there and then I have my rear axle ground down so I can set that thing in and get that welded in. So this setup, uh, when I'm mounting everything on here, this is set up for a 14 inch belt. It's actually like 14 and 11 30 seconds. Uh, belt number 213295A on the Comet uh, belt chart 40 series. Uh, so that's what that is set up for. So this is all one piece, uh, this motor mount. And the transmission and the motor is mounted all on this one piece of steel, which is welded to the swing arm. You can see right here on the top of this metal where the weld went through from the underneath. You can see where it penetrated into the metal right there. That's welded all the way across. And then I welded it on both ends as well. So that thing's not going anywhere. I have my handle that came with the kit for the forward reverse. Came with this. And then came with some belts and some other miscellaneous parts. I was able to use the mount that came with it. I used the one mount here. And then up here on the front, I ended up making two mounts out of some eighth inch steel plate on both sides to mount the front of that two that I just welded to the lower portion of the plate and then bolted it right through the top right there. Um, I have these clutches set up basically according to the Comet uh, chart online. So this has the red spring, this driven clutch. So according to the chart online, this is supposed to face inward, which is the way I have it. And that's the way that I had it on that other uh, silver club car that I built not too long ago that had the 420 and stuff on it. And it worked just fine. Um, so anyways, I'm going to get this thing set in and I'm going to get this swing arm welded to the back of this rear axle. It took me a little while to get that just right because I had to set everything in. I had to line everything up with where this sprocket is going to be on the rear axle. And then I had to get the angle just right on this rear swing arm to where everything set just right. Um, now I did end up losing my pull starter. As you can see, I had some clearance issues on this side. 
uh, over here up along this frame right in here I tried everything possible to keep that I even notched it um, I don't know what I did with that thing but I uh, I notched it out even that cover and I just it wasn't gonna work with it on there it just had to come off so I did lose my pull starter which really sucks because that's good to have if your battery ever goes dead but Technically, I could still keep a string handy and do the old school string wrap and pull it and start it if I absolutely had to. Um, so that's good, but it just it sucks because I lost my cover on that side. And, uh, but anyways, I'm going to get this in, get it welded up, and we will come back to the video. All right, this is not going to be fun. Trying to get this thing in here by myself. I'm gonna get the jack set up down here underneath that where at least I got something to set that on. There she is. So this sprocket here, my chain will come straight down and line up with my sprocket when I set it up right here. And this will get welded in on both sides. And then We'll have my belt going up to the front here. That sets up for everything right there. I had to get my distances just right in between here. And I had to make sure that this pulley wasn't going to hit that bar or this bar. So I had to make sure that, that was high enough to clear everything. So you can see over here where I had some clearance issues. That still spins freely there. Uh, but I didn't have enough room for that cover, so. 
come out quite nice. And then this will just rest on here. I would have liked to have put a bend right here just so that that set flat. I may still do that actually. Because that would just be really nice if that set flush up against this rubber mount right here. I need to get rid of that angle there. <clears throat> All right, she is welded in. Permanently welded in. That sucker is not going anywhere. I did end up bending this down a little bit. Uh, it's not 100% flush, but it's pretty daggone close. So I ended up just pounding that down with the sludge hammer. Uh, everything else still lines up just fine. I did have to make kind of a moon shape right here in my frame. Just about an inch down on this top portion to be able to access this clutch to where I can take it on and off uh, to service that thing because I'll have to keep that thing uh, up to par from time to time. So... Uh, the back one not so much You really don't have any problems out of those but these here you got to take them apart and uh, Dry lube them on the inside every now and then so uh, I got that to where I can access that on and off So that's probably gonna be it for this video for this portion uh, Hopefully this week I can come back and get some of these cables and all that stuff hooked up Start getting some of that stuff done. Get some of these welds and stuff all painted. Um, 